Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome back. Hi, Ted. <laughs> I touched on it last week. Um, the topic of fear, I think it's something that impacts everybody's life. Let's just start. Out, how do you see it impacting people's lives when you're a line of business, Ted? Mm, that's a big question. I mean, I'm trying to in my head. I, I, I bet I spend 60%, of, 60, 70% of my time, particularly when working with individuals in this space. So you could chalk wow. it up as fear, you could chalk it up as insecurities or whatever. And so, wow. um, I mean, let's list, the, I mean, you can list the ways. I mean, inauthenticity, um, focused on different things, the goals we've talked about for that. They don't own their own goals. They're predicated by their parents and the way they were raised or they're predicated by the neighborhood that they lived in. Like fear and insecurity plays in all that stuff, right? Yeah. Um, now, having said that, I spend a majority of my time in the space, but I can tell you that I'm also not one of the coaches out there that says I'm going to teach people or coach people to overcome their fear. What I am going to do, there's a couple things here. There's, there's, if I was going to parse it out, like the main thing that I want for people is the awareness. So one, the awareness and the vocalization of I'm fearful of X. I'm insecure. Yeah. So real time, like oftentimes, Jay, when I go into a business and I work with a team, I'll ask one simple question and we'll have wind up having a four or five hour session on, which is the, say there's 10 people in the room uh, on a team. And I say, what's your deepest insecurities? And people are like, they have to think about, it, mm -hmm. which is my experience over and over again. When I ask that question is because they're not fully aware of it of their insecurities or their fears, right? They may just go, I'm fearful of failing. Well, you gotta peel that back. What are you really fearful of? Yeah. Where's the fear based, right? So there's this awareness piece. The second piece that I coach people on, again, this is not overcoming the fear, it's getting in touch with and being fully aware of the ramifications of that fear, right? And so that goes back into that list that we just talked about, this idea that, um, it's having me show up inauthentic. Um, I'm making goals that don't mean anything to me. They mean some, you know, the things that we just So how it's about. ruling your life, basically. How? Yeah. Okay. Or the fear has me handcuffed. I'm mm -hmm. crippled. I'm not taking mm -hmm. any action. Which leads me to the main message that I give people today when I coach people in this space, which is take action. Yeah. Take action. So I kind of lead people through a, a you know, I'm not going to say it's a process, but I'm when I coach somebody on this, I do spend ample time in the awareness piece. I then spend ample time in them starting to understand the ramifications of the fear, the way fear is showing up in their life and what is prohibiting them from doing or what are they doing that's not serving them well. Because there's two different things. There's, there's the prohibiting, taking action, and there's also mm -hmm. they're doing things that's not serving them well mm -hmm. or their family or their Acting business. Acting with fear. Acting yeah. yeah, yes, yes. And then the next piece is to take action. And that's, as a coach, that's where I hold people to high levels of accountability, to do something different or to, like we talked about, just lean into something that you're fearful of and doing it. Yes. And the last piece is paying attention and learning and becoming aware on the back end when you take action. But that take action piece, because I think over and over again, we could draw out different examples, but I think over and over again, when people follow that sequence, when they become aware, when they really start to understand the ramifications of what's happening in their business or life, and they're like, well, this can't happen anymore. I can't allow this to continue to happen. Then they take action. The learning part oftentimes is that, well, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. So then we realize that some of these things are just rooted in our head or whatever. Now, could one argue they've overcome some fear? Sure. The reason I say I don't really coach people in the bucket of overcoming fear versus focusing on these things is that fear is going to be ever present, right? Yeah. I mean, I have, you know, for all intent and purposes, a successful 13 year run as a solopreneur, and I still have fear every month. Yeah. yeah. But again, I got to go, all right, it's prohibiting me. Am I aware? What are the ramifications? And then take action on certain things. But don't you also think at the same time, I was thinking about this because I knew this topic was coming up. 
the fear doesn't always go away, but it lessens with action. Well, that's what I mean by the overcome. Right? Like one could yeah. argue that if you took action and you learned, wow, that wasn't as bad as what I thought it was going to be. Like yeah. just take a hard conversation. You're fearful to have a hard conversation with a loved one. Right. Yeah. Let's just, and then you go have the hard conversation. You're like, wow, they were really receptive. Didn't go the way you thought. Yeah. And then I want you to learn from that because that will parlay into being a little quicker to take action next time when you have a hard conversation to have with that person. And then all of a sudden, to your point, yes, it will lessen and lessen and lessen, right? Yeah. I also think of that, I know it's kind of cliche, but it's like, what would you do if you couldn't fail? You know, like that type of thinking. And like how far, if when you look at that, how far off from what your life is and what you're doing is that, right? Because if I think of somebody like you, I'd imagine that that's not super far off, right? Like whatever you could do or whatever you would want to do if you had zero chance of failing what that looks like versus what your actual life looks like you know what I mean it's like not very far off whereas I think some people their life would look completely different the picture of what that would be painting is completely different and then I think if if that is the case where can you find somewhere even like little places to like meet in the middle at least to start you know what I mean like little things that you can start doing to itch yourself towards that whether it's you know, certain social circles or certain activities and then certain business habits and like slowly build yourself towards that. You know, I don't think any, this is another thing that I think happens with fear is that we're, you know, we talked about stretch goals a couple of weeks ago, but you're thinking of that goal up here and so few times thinking of the next step you have to actually take, right? Like like when, when somebody emailed you for the first time and said, can you speak to a group of people, right? And you were already in that group thinking about all those faces staring at you and what you had to say versus saying yes, thinking about your talk, getting on the plane. You know, you know what I mean? Like we we put ourselves in the in the hardest situation when we when and that is the state of fear versus the first step of where, what we need to take in order to move towards yeah. that thing. And so we stop, you know, we don't even take the first step um, because we're so scared of that one. All the way over there. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. I agree. I agree. I I will say this is very cheesy and cliche, but if anybody, and I see this on my daughter all the time. When I went to Disney World for the first time, I was, I think I was like 27 years old. It was like in my late 20s, right? And I'm guessing that for a lot of people that experience for the first time is, is, you know, in your childhood. And we stayed at the end until the fireworks display and like they, it's beautiful. And they put the cartoons, like the Disney movie it's on the castle and reflect with like all the sayings and everything. And Ted, like I started bawling, crying because I just, I was like taken back. And I think it was something that the little cricket said in Pinocchio that took me back to this place. And I remember it so vividly being a child or even like a young adult and having no inhibitions when it came to my dreams, right? And like feeling like anything and everything was achievable and possible. And how, as I got older, I put certain limitations on myself because of fears, right? And so like, I don't know what it takes to get anybody to that place, but if you can get and think about yourself in that place and just w- or watch a child do anything, right? Um, before we put our fears on them and just, like dream that big dream and put yourself in that position and feel that feeling. It's, it's a uh, pretty magical. You don't need to go to Disney world <laughs> to be able to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So today, Ted, biggest takeaway you want everybody to think about when it comes to fear. Well, I just want you to one fear. So we've been saying this one thing the last couple of weeks. I just want you to say one fear. And then I want okay, you to say what you just put down, but then I want you to peel it back. Yeah. Like you can't, it's not enough to just simply say, I fear failure. Like, where is it coming from? What specifically do you fear? Do you feel judgment? Do you fear that you won't have income? Do you fear like, da, 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 da. Um, think about the ramifications next. So again, you're, this is just sifting through one fear. And then after that, what action do you need to take? So okay, we're not so going to get to that action fourth, piece. We're not going to get to that fourth piece, which is, you know, the learning from you'll get that when you take action and then go, wow, that was as dreadful as I thought it was going to be. Or 
that wasn't just as it wasn't as bad right yeah yeah and if it is dreadful then you're stronger and better for it you know yeah yeah. Other way, actually, so. part of the learning in the dreadful pieces but i also made it through it mm-hmm. yep you have to tell the tale and hey it makes for great stories later on <laughs> right. right awesome well thank you again Sid, for another amazing session um we shall see everybody next week all right take mm-hmm. care everybody